Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone's having a great start to their day. Today, we're going to explore uh, grading, assessing generative AI. Next, I'll pass it on to Nick for introductions. Hey, everyone. So my name is Nicholas Kidd. I'm from Toms River, New Jersey. My undergraduate major at Virginia Tech was business information technology. And after the completion of this program, we'll be looking for a job in strategy consulting. Hi, I'm Annie Wu. I'm from Fairfax, Virginia. My undergraduate major was also business information technology from Virginia Tech. And after this program, I will be a technology consultant in Tyson's Corner. Hi, everyone. My name is Sophia Campos. I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. My undergrad was in economics at the University of Miami, Florida. And after the completion of this program, I will be a business analyst. My name is Anthony Vo. I'm from Annandale, Virginia. My undergraduate major at Virginia Tech was business information technology, and after the completion of this program, I will be planning to be a consultant. My name is Lynn Shitwood. I'm from South Mountain Lake, Virginia. I received my undergraduate last year in criminology, and after the completion of this program, I'll be looking for work in crime analytics. Before we get started, we just want to thank everyone who's been guided and supported our project throughout the year. So first, we'd like to start with our capstone sponsor, uh, Edward McClarney. Next, we'd like to thank our faculty advisor, Dr. Andrew McKinley was a huge help in the ROI portion of our project. Um, last, we'd like to thank the executive director of the MSBA program, uh, Jay Winkler, and the rest of the CBA staff. Now I'll pass it to Sophia to get us started. Thanks, Nick. So with generative AI, we see it evolving immensely, especially over the past year with ChatGPT, uh, Microsoft Copilot, and we slowly see that being integrated into the workplace. But the issue with that is that there are possibilities of hallucinations and incorrect outcomes. And that brought us to our key question, how can NASA encourage the integration of generative AI into their operations to enhance their mission outcomes? And now I'm going to pass it off to Lynn. Thanks, Sophia. And I'll get a little bit into our project introduction. Our project begins with a thorough understanding of the current state and capabilities of AI technologies, examining any possible techniques that could be used as a framework to enhance NASA's mission and scientific research. Next, technique identification. This process involved looking at steps that met the current needs for NASA, but also held the potential for future scalability and iteration. The five techniques that we felt best fit these needs were human judgment, criteria-based assessment, AI versus AI, AI voting, and standardized testing. With our five research or five techniques identified, we dove deep into research, examining any possible use cases or case studies to assess possible challenges or possible goals that we could get from these techniques. And lastly, based off our findings, we've cut several comprehensive recommendations that we'll touch on a little bit later into our presentation. I'll now pass things over to Anthony to get into discussion on our five techniques. Thank you, Lynn. This is our five techniques composing of our overall framework. I would like to begin with human judgment. Human judgment is a human in the loop uh, evaluation system where, um, like the name implies, the human's there to test for coherence of a given output. This is due to the fact that although uh, generative AI can produce fast results, it misses like crucial details, emotional impact, and creativity. The best two methodologies to conduct human judgment are through a tailored rubric and subject matter expert. With the tailored rubric, the user can have a certain set to um, look over the given output, making sure everything's correct and further improve the output if needed. With the subject matter expert, it allows a sort of a gatekeeper to um, prevent any um, knowledge gaps and disruptions. And with, with the subject matter expert, it allows to pass on for the next part of the step. Next, I'd like to pass it on to Sophia for a criteria-based assessment. Thanks, Anthony. So for criteria-based assessment, we really wanted to introduce this by using predefined benchmarks and criteria to assess the outputs of our generative AI. And the reason we did this was to have something to not only use with human-based judgment, but the rest of our techniques. And the two things that we saw most important was to look at the accuracy versus precision. Accuracy being how close our results yielded to the true positive, while precision being how consistent our results were. And the reason for this was the methodology to set these benchmarks to, to see the overall trustworthiness of our generative AI outputs. Now passing it off to Nick. Thank you, Sophia. So this technique is AI versus AI, which is essentially a comparative analysis between multiple AI models. So this approach allows us to see how multiple models would react to receiving the same exact question or prompt. So the purpose of this technique is to find those strengths and weaknesses across AI models. So when we understand how each approach is problem solving, we can better choose which to use in our own specific use cases. So the way this is done is by simultaneously querying multiple AI models with the same exact question or prompt. This can be further enhanced by then allowing those AI models 
then cross evaluate their responses with each other. This not only helps in error or bias detection, but it also can help to create a collaborative environment across AI models to learn and grow from each other. Now I'll pass it to Andy to talk about AI voting. Thank you, Nick. Our next technique of AI voting refers to a methodology where multiple AI models are generating their own individual predictions or decisions. After that, we'll compare the outputs of each, and the purpose of this is to assess the accuracy, reliability, and robustness of each of these models, and hopefully leverage the diversity of more than one. So formally, this can be referred to as an ensemble method, where these models are being trained with the same data set with various parameters, and after that, their outputs are combined using something called a voting mechanism, such as majority weighted or soft voting. Next, Lynn will talk about our last technique of standard testing. Thanks, Amy. I'll talk about our last technique, standardized testing. Standardized testing in AI seeks to measure the capabilities of general intelligence. This goes far and beyond just the conventional exam style question tips of the MCAT or the LSAT, in which AI has performed traditionally very well in. AI also now outperforms human and creativ creativity tests and standard divergent thinking tests. Tailoring these styles of tests to NASA's unique leads, needs can allow for better decision making and allow for uh, <clears throat> maintaining high ethical standards across all health fronts of AI operation. Human-AI collaboration and mission integration. AI can play a vital role in mission simulations, modeling complex scenarios for both expected and unexpected scenarios that could, be, could arise in space in a risk-free virtual environment. Lastly, the use of benchmarks. Standardized testing utilization, utilizes a combination of traditional AI benchmarks and custom scenarios that NASA could face to allow for AI, the AI technique to be graded and assessed for the outputs that it releases. Now I'll pass things over to Anthony to begin session on recommendations. Thank you, Lynn. So after a careful consideration, we'd like to present our three recommendations of tailored rubric, ROI follow-up, and uh, courses and tutorials. With the tailored rubric, it will be easy for NASA to roll out and assess and be accessible to every uh, member within NASA. Next, with our ROI follow-up, was um, in our report we uh, discuss how a coding assistant would be useful. And then with this uh, experiment, we can see further um, return on investment potential uh, bottlenecks. And finally, with courses and tutorials, not everyone uh, in the agency has the same amount of knowledge within the generative AI space. So we believe with uh, courses and tutorials rolling out in a bi-monthly setting, it would allow uh, everyone to have a like, similar amount of knowledge we'll met with for that. Next, I'd like to go on to our reflections. So this was a very uh, interesting and difficult project as y'all know, generative AI has uh, evolved and progressed a lot. This is a very emerging and disruptive technology where not everyone can uh, see where we're going. And every time we found a solution, there was a new update where we had to figure it out. So scoping it out was very difficult to see. Finally, I'd like to go to our acknowledgments. Um, Thank you to the CBA uh, staff and our sponsor, Ed, Edward McLaren. This has been a very difficult and interesting project, and we shot to um, reach the sky, but hopefully we landed on the moon today. <laughs> so this is, uh, like you said, um, an important and emerging topic across several companies. Um, including those in the room, I'm sure. Uh, in addition to trying to determine kind of the best software to use and to train employees on, did you have any discussion or exploration of policies around the use of AI? So I would say we weren't necessarily looking for a specific AI to use for NASA, of course, but just like we uh, assessed all, we our early stages of research looked at looking at various softwares and we kind of, wanted to figure out which one or which, what is the most unique feature from chat GBT, blah, blah, blah. What makes that unique from the, the next guy? Um, so we kind of used that. And I wouldn't say there was, say kind of just hard figuring out what made them different. Like policy wise, they're not gonna come out and say like, oh, this is why our software is better. Or they're gonna try to say why it's better, but necessarily if that's true. Um, I'd say the biggest policy thing is uh, the ethical standards of just, making sure there's no data breaches, what input you can actually be, what information you can put into your AI software uh, without there being a risk for a data breach or anything like that. So I say that's the biggest uh, policy concern would just be information input. Thanks, Mike. Good job. 
Um, so what occurs to me is you're not seeing your presentation to the to NASA. Uh, presenting something to a C-suite may be different than presenting it to a technical team. So I'm curious, uh, given knowing Ed McLarney and his group, it was your presentation a bit more technical to a technical team, or did was it a little bit more high level? Am I making sense? Yeah. Um, so for our framework, what we proposed to do, um, it is very high level, and the fact that we wanted to apply to many different teams at NASA, and not to specific use cases per se. Um, we didn't have access to proprietary proprietary data um, from NASA, so kind of what Ed wanted to see in the rest of the C-suite. Um, it's just a general framework of techniques to assess AI that can apply to software engineers, people in HR, data analysts, things like that. So, so you didn't have a bunch of NASA scientists picking parts of presentation? Um, they were in the room, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. All right. Any other questions? 